I'm a researcher at the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research. What that means is I get to play with the biggest, baddest computers on the planet. You can tell I'm a geek. <laughs> This is me dressed up. <laughs> I also get to work with some of the smartest people in the world as we try and solve the problems that face the Square Kilometre Array Radio Telescope, or SKA. Now, big science is expensive. It needs large, complex machines that are very, very, perhaps another, very expensive. <laughs> the Large Hadron Collider that you can see behind me is the largest man-made machine on the planet. But it's estimated to find the Higgs boson with it cost about 13 and a bit billion US dollars. Now, with the exchange rate at the moment, that's about 18 billion Australian dollars. The next big science project is coming here to Australia and to South Africa. The Square Kilometre Array, the low-frequency aperture arrays, which are on your left, we're going to be putting about 100,000 of those out into the bush. And the dishes are going into South Africa. This is a really big project. It's going to be sited at the Shire of Murchison. The Shire, that invokes images of quaint English areas, or hobbits. This shire is 41,277 square kilometres. That's a third the size of England. <laughs> the website for the shire says there are 103 people living there. <laughs> That makes two milli people per square kilometre, which gives it a population density lower than Greenland. There really is very little out there. Now, you're asking, why on earth would we build it in the middle of nowhere like this? Well, what we need is radio quiet. We need to be away from these things. Wi-Fi, anything that is generating radio interference. The signals we are listening for have traveled millions and millions of light years to get to us. And they are very, very faint. Now I'm going to take a risk. We're going to do some live science. <laughs> Now, you all felt the building shake earlier when the music was on and the dancing was on. My turn. Everybody, feet firmly on the floor. I want you to feel my feathers. <laughs> Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Did the earth move for you? <laughs> well, no, it's not really surprising. That was 60 microjoules of energy. And until 2014, that was more energy than all the radio telescopes on the planet had ever recorded. That's how faint these signals are we're looking for. Now, I'm a data-intensive astronomer, and I'm part of a group that is currently designing the supercomputer to drive this telescope. We'll be building in two phases. We hope to start building in three to four years. In the first phase, we'll only be building 10% of the radio telescope. That's all, just 10%. But that will cost, on current exchange rates, about 1 billion Australian dollars. But from that telescope, we will be producing vast quantities of data. The four low-frequency experiments that will be happening here in WA, that I could get numbers for, will produce around 550 exabytes of data. That's a lot of data. Now, a Blu-ray disc is 1.2 millimeters thick. It can hold 500 gigabytes. Those of you in the room who are good at mental maths will have worked out that the stack is 13,000 200 kilometers high. That's a big stack. The Australian coastline, it's 12,889. We have 
enough left over to go around the ACT as well. <laughs> like I said, that's an awful lot of disks. But this huge amount of data gives us a problem. We can't process all of that data. Now, I was at a conference last week where it was estimated that about 60% of astronomy papers are done on data other than the original experiments. We really struggle to process that data, and that's why I'm here. You can help. Yes, all of you. Let me explain why. Back in 2012, we at ICRA realized we were going to have a big problem here. So what we did is we teamed up with some colleagues at Johns Hopkins University. This is an image of the panoramic survey telescope and rapid response system, which sits on top of a mountain in Hawaii. It has got the biggest digital camera on the planet in it, 1.4 gigapixels. And it is producing some stunning images. So what we wanted to do is see how we could offload the computing and see if we could distribute it out to people. So what we did, we thought, well, what's a good size number? How about 100,000 galaxies? Now, each galaxy is about 4,500 pixels. Those of you who are good at the mental maths again will have worked out that's 450 million pixels that we need to process. Now, on my MacBook, it takes five minutes to process one pixel. And I've got a top-end MacBook. So that would take 4,277 years, which is a little bit long. But like I said, I've got a top-end MacBook. I've got eight cores. That brings it down to 534 years. <laughs> I'm... I intend to live for a ripe old age, but not that long. But hey, I'll have lost some weight. <laughs> so what did we do? We went out and we started searching for software that could help us. We came across the Berkeley Open Interconnect Network Computing System, or BOINC for short. Now, those of you who are part of SETI at home, it's a fantastic piece of software because it's a community project. And people genuinely help each other. The Boink software is actually really smart. It works on Windows, OS X, Linux, and your Android phone. You tell it how much of the CPU you want to give it, and it will quietly use a little bit of your machine behind the scenes while you're not using it. And if you shut it down, it's like a game. It will say, oh, I need to save. So we started looking at this. And in 2013, with a grant from Amazon, yes, Amazon, the book people, we started up the project. We called it the Skynet. <laughs> hey, I'm a geek. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> and POGS, PanStar's Optical Galaxy Survey. It's been running now for about two years. In that time, we have processed 95 1,000 galaxies. I have 33,000 users who are helping me do this on 260,000 computers. That's not bad, really, is it? But a bit like the Skynet, I actually know what you're doing. This is actually genuinely images I processed. The gray bits are the bits that I really did. And we also have in it an outreach component that allows us to give trophies and prizes. Now, most of them are very geeky. You know, there'll be elements, astronomers. But we also do random prizes for people if they compute a significant number, the one millionth. And the guy who did, we sent him Lego, because we're geeks. We like Lego. The Sydney Opera House by a river in Montana. So we were able to start getting people more involved in this. Now, there are a number of projects that you can help with. This is mine, the Skynet Pogs. Look it up on the internet, Google it, and note the Skynet is spelt all one word. The granddaddy of them all is SETI at home, looking for radio waves that are extragalactic in source. LHC at home and Atlas at home, people using their home computers to help 
find the Higgs boson. These two run simulations of what is happening on the Large Hadron Collider. Rosetta at home is looking at three-dimensional protein folding for biomedical research to see how proteins can be shaped for what we can do. Now, where do we go from here? Science needs to advance, but we do need your help. As we look at a mosaic of all the galaxies that have been produced by all my point contributors, we need to remember the future of our planet is driven by science, innovation, and thought leaders. People you've seen on this stage today, these are the types of people to do it. We're the ones who will try and address the big problems. How do we feed a growing population? How do we produce energy without killing the planet? How do we understand the deeper mysteries of the universe? But we can't do it alone. We need your help. So if you can contribute CPU cycles to these projects, please do. Help us help science help advance the planet. Thank you.